Hello everyone, this is Aida Qolami from Agrimat Soft Research Lab and in today's video I am going to talk about p-value in hypothesis testing. So before we start, I should answer the question that what is hypothesis testing? So hypothesis testing is a way to make decisions, but it's a precise statistical way so during this procedure you will calculate some parameters some variables and at the end you can make a precise and concrete uh, decision okay so probably you have seen this thing so h0 and h a, which stands for null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. This could be H1 also. Okay, so what are them? So H null hypothesis or H0 is the one we want to collect evidence against. So we want to prove its rank. Um, we want to we want to collect enough evidence to make sure we can reject it and accept the alternative one so that's the common way to do this hypothesis testing we commonly want to reject the long hypothesis and accept the alternative one but i'm sure using an example you can better understand what I'm talking about and we can have a good introduction to this topic using an example. So let's say I make biscuits. So let's say I have a company that produces uh, products and it, produ and it produces some biscuit packages also. So I have some let's say these are biscuits okay <laughs> so this is the biscuits i have and that's the package so i as the owner of the company i claim that each package of those biscuits contain 200 grams biscuits okay they contain 200 gram biscuits and these packages each have 200 gram weight. So then how can you prove my claim to be true or wrong? How could you do that? For proving wrong or right, you cannot weight each of the biscuits that I make. It's, it's obvious. You cannot weight each single package to see uh, to see if all of them have 200 grams weight or not that's that's we're sure about that so what do we do we collect a sample so in this sample let's say you have 20 packages okay you have a sample of 20 packages then what you will do is that you weight all of them and make an average so a, a tip to consider here is that we in the hypothesis testing we are not talking about each single package so we want to make decision about the average weight about um, about the average about the uh, variance etc so at at the end this procedure does not uh, and to the decision that each package has this much weight precisely you know what i mean we are talking about the average so so let's say to test the claim that i've made uh, in one day one of you gets to the factory in in one working day of the factory one of you gets there and gets a sample size of 20 packages and then uh, calculates the average weight of these packages then the average value which is calculated is 100 
98 okay grams so this is the average of these 20 packages in one working day of the factory okay then the other one of you in the in the second day arrives to the factory and gets a 20 package and and the average weight of these packages is 180 okay then the same the third one of you gets to the factory and gets the same size sample and the average of these packages the average weight of these packages is let's say 150 grams now you should decide you should decide that based on these three average weights is my claim true or it's a or is it right so in here maybe a lot of you confirms that 198 grams is so much similar to 200 and to 200 grams so maybe we can say that the claim is right it's not wrong it's it's so much similar you know so we can accept the claim but maybe a lot of you um, do not agree that this is the same as 200 so maybe you say when the average weight of the 20 packages is 180 maybe the claim is wrong so it's we have enough evidence to prove it's wrong but maybe a lot other do not think like that maybe those other uh, those other people think that this number is enough evidence against this claim not this one not this one what should we do in here you can see the need to have hypothesis testing in here you can see the need to have a statistical test to prove or uh, decline and reject the hypo the hypothesis that we make okay let's get to technical topics right now so in order to do the hypothesis testing in this particular example we want to have a null hypothesis i'm sorry a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis so what does h0 in here say it says that the average of the of the biscuits of the package is 200 grams i said that we want to collect evidence against this claim so the null hypothesis is what we we want to prove wrong then the alternative one in here is that the the average of these packages is not is not 200 grams it's something else we're not talking about that we just want to prove that it's not 200 grams what would we do in here the first step is that we first collect a sample so all we do in here is based on the calculations of these of this sample so we first collect a sample uh, for example the sample size is 20 packages okay then we calculate the average weight of these products so we have observed 
average. Okay, then in the third step, what we do is that we calculate the test statistic. And then we decide based on that. So in here, a tip is that for the small sample size, and by small, I mean below 30, for the small sample size, we used, we used T student uh, test. And for bigger sample size, we use Z uh, distribution, okay? We use Z test. In here, we want to use T test. So what we, what we do is that we have a sample size of 20, and then we have an average for observations. Let's say the average of observations of 20 size is 198 we want to we want to see if this is the if this is meaningfully uh, below 200 so if we want to see if this observation can reject the null hypothesis and we can accept that the difference to 200 is meaningful is significant then what we do is that we calculate the test statistic which is t uh, t statistic okay in here it's t statistic so you get to you have a, a table okay you have a t table for that you get to this t table and in here you should know the alpha level also so you should know the confidence level let's say we want to do the test for 90 percent confidence and the alpha you should know them okay the alpha is um 10 percent okay the alpha is 10 percent and we are doing two tails why Be because we said alternative hypothesis to just be not uh, 200 so we are not we do not care that the average is more than 200 or less than 200 we just want to prove that this average is not 200 okay um So then we are doing the two tails. We have 10% uh, of alpha, and then we want to have degree of freedom. Degree of freedom is uh, observation sample size minus one. So this is 20 minus one, which gives you 19. So you go for 19 in here, and then for two tail, for two tail and 10%. It's here and then you have 1.729. Okay, so T, T statistic is 1.7 Nine. So that's the t-statistic. How can you decide based on t-statistic? You should go for p-value. So what you will do is that you go for, uh, I, I just searched for p-value from t-score calculator and I, I get to this site. You can do it using Excel, using other uh, applications I just want to have a quick tutorial for the whole procedure so I want to get you to p-value and then teach you how to decide based on all these information and p-value so in here what it wants from you is the t-score which was 
uh, 9-2 or 2-9, 7-2-9. Then it wants degree of freedom, which is 19, okay? Then it wants the significance level, which is alpha. And here I told you that confidence level here is 90%. The alpha is 10%. So the alpha is 10%. One-tailed or two-tailed, we're doing two-tailed. Then you click on calculate. And that's the p-value. So p-value in here is 0 0.1. And let's get into here. p-value. is point zero point one okay in here what we want so this this uh, result is a little bit tricky but we have a general rule whenever p value is smaller than alpha you can reject null okay and if the p-value is bigger than alpha you cannot reject the null hypothesis so you can you cannot reject the null hypothesis and in here we, we do not say you should accept the null hypothesis in here we say that you do not have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis as i told you before we're doing this hypothesis testing so that we can collect enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis when we cannot we do not say that we accept it but we say we did not have meaningful p-value to reject it okay so um i hope this all have helped you better understand the hypothesis testing and how to use p-value in hypothesis testing um please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel i will see you in the next videos and bye